Holyrood's Health Committee is meeting to discuss the readiness of Scottish health boards to combat future cyber security breaches. It follows the ransomware attack on the NHS across the UK last month. I was booked in to have a septal myectomy, a heart operation. I've been waiting for it for many, many, many months now. Um, they only do it on, on a Friday. And you expected to have the operation today? Indeed, yes, yeah, yeah. I was all cannulaed up. I daren't show you my... I've been shaved down the front because they were going to open me up. My arms have been shaved. So I was all ready to go, nil by mouth, since this morning. And then at half past one, the surgeon turned up and said, unfortunately, we've been uh, hacked and there's nothing we can do. We can't operate on you today. Well, Professor Bill Buchanan is an expert in computing at Edinburgh Napier University and will be a key figure in today's discussions. Good morning to you. Good morning. What did that event last month tell us about the vulnerability of the NHS? I think it shows us that, that we have what you would call a legacy system. We, we've built a, an NHS infrastructure with old types of, of technology and we're gradually moving it towards a, a more modern infrastructure. But we can actually see that the whole infrastructure is still weak. Along with this, we need much more integration between primary and secondary healthcare and obviously to, to include the citizen in any re-architecting of our systems. Well, a few points to raise there. Let's just look at the weakness, first of all, in the system. Is that down to the fact that some of the systems are old or is it down to the fact that different health boards are using different systems? It's a large and disparate networked infrastructure. It has lots of different types of technology, lots of different databases, lots of systems. Uh, so it, it is vulnerable because it, it isn't really over there isn't really an overarching policy for the complete infrastructure and we can't really manage it quickly. I think it took about a week to be able to restore everything, even though it was only identified that about 1,500 computers were actually uh, infected. So some way to be able to cope with a large-scale uh, attack on the network is something that Scotland needs to look at. And whose responsibility ultimately is it to make sure that these systems are robust? Well, I would say that uh, government needs to provide much more funding for the infrastructure because we it's our health, it's our family's health, and really we need to look at much more dynamic infrastructures. We've seen lots of industries, such as oil and gas and the finance industry, really transforming themselves to be ultra-secure and, and dynamic and can co cope with daily attacks over the internet uh, where health has been resistant to, to, to change generally. If you think about it, £15 billion was invested into a new healthcare system in the UK and it was completely scrapped. So I think everyone in the NHS needs to take on board that we are living in a world of the data. This is an information age and we need to really drive patient safety through data. And, and security is often seen as a barrier and we need a much more openness, but we also need to make sure that things like data is encrypted so that even if someone gets into our, our network, then they cannot breach the data. And ultimately, you mentioned some of the industries that have been very good with this. Is there, is there a, a structural problem within the NHS in terms of its size that might have prevented things moving faster? Or is it, as you have suggested, just down to finances? Uh, I think it's down to both. Uh, it is a large and disparate network. We would uh, obviously look to, to create a more layered approach where you can isolate problems. But more and more, like it or not, we're moving to the cloud. Uh, it doesn't have to be the public cloud. I think today it's been announced that 190 million uh, voter records have been exposed on the public cloud because somebody put them there without any protection. But we're moving more and more into a virtualised infrastructure where we have a private cloud infrastructure where your operating system doesn't really exist on your local machine but is, is exists within a, a private cloud infrastructure. So I think we need to look at things like defence in depth to make sure that we can dynamically cope with any uh, attack on, on our infrastructure and okay. especially around the large-scale power outage. As we've seen from BA and Capita, if large companies like that can't cope with a, with a large-scale uh, power loss, then we've got to worry that this could happen into our most critical of, uh, of industries, which is our healthcare infrastructure. Professor Bill Buchanan from Edinburgh Napier University. Thank you. Nine minutes to eight. Now, Theresa May yesterday said she's getting on with the job amid contention.